or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Welcome to Verbling. Welcome to my class. I'm Teacher Oakley. Come on in and join the class. Push the green button and we will start learning. Today we're going to talk about intonation patterns. Intonation is the melody of English. Come on in to the class and we will learn it. So come on in folks and we're going to talk about intonation and how to use it effectively. Uh, we're going to talk specifically about intonation patterns when we specifically raise our voice and lower our voice pitch and when, where, and how, and why we do such a thing. Uh, don't be shy. I see we have viewers. Come on in and join the class and we'll get started. We're going to have a little fun today. This should be very interesting, actually. Intonation patterns uh, are a very interesting topic because we can actually use intonation patterns to win friends and influence people. Mm. Uh, for those of you who may be in business, this is a great class to join because uh, you can actually use the psychology of intonation to influence decisions and to help you in business, help you in sales, help you impress your boss, things like that. Uh, okay, come on in and join the class. I see we have viewers. Ah, Rasal. Oh, join button is blue. Thank you, Rasal. Okay. <laughs> Come, come. So you should try, you should try the uh, the premium. <laughs> okay. All right. Now we're getting some folks in here. <laughs> Hi, Rasa. How are you today? Hello. Can you, can you hear me? Hello, I'm fine today. How are you? I'm doing okay. It's very good Hello? to see you. Can you hear cool. me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear okay. you fine. Okay, uh, okay. Okay, we have another student here whose name I can probably not pronounce. <laughs> Tiago? No, you can call me Tiago. That's okay. Tiago. Well, that's right. easy. That's much easier. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Okay. Name, it's not easy as well. It's like Oakley. Really? That's perfect. Um, I You say it's not easy, but you just said it absolutely perfectly. Oh, thank you. Well, That's because I have a good teacher here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Tiago, okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, I uh, also like to welcome Isaiah. Hi, Isaiah. Are you there? Hello, uh, yes, I am here. Welcome, uh, welcome to the class. Yeah, I uh, also like to welcome Isaiah. Hi, Isaiah. Hello, how are, are you? There? Yes, oh, I am here. Oh, yes, I am here. Okay, you, you've got uh, kind of an echo, Isaiah. So if you have uh, the you know, the verbling window open or a, another window open with with uh, YouTube, it's going to create that echo. So just close that other window, okay? All right. I, I already closed it. All right. Well, that's, it's not echoing anymore, so that worked. Very effective. Okay. Very good. Uh, also, good morning, Gabriel. How are you? Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm hey, well. Hey. Hi, Ava. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you fine. Hi. Hi. How are you today? Doing good. Good. Glad to hear it. Meadow, uh, or Meadow in, Meadow's out. Okay, all right. All right. Um, well, I'm going to get started. Uh, a couple other people, Maria, Efren. 
good morning. All right, let's get started. Whew. All right, today we are going to talk about the melody of English language. Oh. We're going to be talking about high, middle, low pitch. All right, and how we use them. In English, English is said to be a three-toned language. We have uh, actually four tones, really. We have our high pitch. Oh, my God! Okay, up there in your, our middle pitch. If we're really bored, we tend to talk at middle pitch. Or our low pitch, if we're angry or depressed. Oh, my God, I'm going to kill myself. We, we tend to talk with low pitch. We're going to talk about intonation patterns today. There are patterns that we generally follow when we speak English. And uh, it's very interesting. Once we, I introduce these, we're going to play around with it. And uh, there's some interesting things to learn here. Okay, so uh, let's jump right in. Intonation patterns, the most basic type of intonation patterns, are what we call uh, um, final falling pitch, final falling pitch, final falling pitch, and final rising pitch. Hi, Alpha, by the way. Hey, Alpha. Hey. Anyway, uh, we have, those are the basic pitches. Final falling, when we fall at the very last, the end of the sentence, the final vowel sound or final syllable of the sentence, we fall in pitch. And final rising is when it rises. What does that mean? Final falling pitch at the end of a sentence, we use for statements or we use for questions where we need information. And final rising, and it, sh and it final falling pitch shows that the speaker is certain of what they're saying. They believe it. It may or may not be true, or it could be a lie, but they are saying it as if it's true. Okay, and final rising pitch means that the speaker is not sure. Simple example, if I take the very simple phrase, it's going to rain. If I use final, <laughs> meadow, hey, meadow is in, hooray, everyone, all right. Hi, uh, good to see you. If I use the, fi the phrase, it's going to rain, and I use final falling pitch, it's going to rain. Yeah. Okay. It shows that I, I think, the speaker, me, I believe it's going to rain. If I use rising pitch, it changes. It's going to rain? Uh, notice my body language, too. My eyebrows scrunched. Okay. <laughs> I tried not to do that. It's hard not to use body language. It's going to rain? Oh, okay, okay, so that shows that I'm not certain. It turns my simple statement actually into a question. Uh, okay, so a final rising and final falling are the basic, the two most basic pitches that we use, but we're going to use, uh, we're going to look at some other pitch patterns. Pitch patterns are important because they convey meaning. Um, it's, it's interesting that some languages, in particular like Mandarin, uh, some of the Far Eastern language, Vietnamese, changes in pitch are actually used to express meaning as in a word. It can change a word from one word to another. But in English, we use pitch or intonation patterns to convey a larger chunk of meaning, I'm sure or unsure, or it can also convey a lot about what the speaker is feeling. Okay, but uh, all right, uh, the two basic ones, final falling or final rising. Rising is a little different. Final falling is quite simple. It means that you're sure you're making a statement. Most sentences when you're talking will have final falling intonation. Okay, we also, final rising intonation we use in a, a few different ways, though. We can use it 
when we're unsure it's going to rain, we use final rising intonation for yes or no questions. We use fi final falling for information questions. So, uh, go ahead and, uh, Russell, are you there? Yes. Where did everybody go? I can't. Oh, yes, hi. Okay. That, that, I thought everyone went out for a drink or something. <laughs> 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 Ask me a question. Any question. How are you today? Okay. All right. Notice when he asked that question, how are you today? At the end, today. Today. The t went up and the day went down. That's an information question. I would have to actually express myself and explain it. Although, honestly, that is something we call a rhetorical question in English. When I say to somebody, how you doing? I don't really expect an answer. You know, uh, rhetorical questions are questions that we ask that we don't really expect an answer to. Uh, okay, like, uh, politicians are crazy, aren't they? Okay, I'm using falling pitch. I don't really expect an answer to that. Uh, Tiago. Yep. Hi. Hey, I got your name right, I think. <laughs> yeah. Ask me a question. <laughs> Ask me a question, any question. Uh, where do you live? Where do you live? Okay. Very good. Where do you live? Notice there's one point in his question where it rises. Where do you live? All right, the sentence, the pitch oh, goes up. Where do you live? And then it falls at the end. That's an information question. I cannot answer that question yes or no. It's impossible. These intonation patterns are burned into our heads as native speakers. We feel obligated to uh, give information when somebody asks a question with a falling intonation. This is interesting. You can use this to good effect because uh, think about it. If you're going to ask somebody a question and you do not want to hear the answer no, then don't form your question with rising pitch at the end. Because then it's very easy for my native wired brain to just say no. Would you like to buy this? Would you like to buy this? No. <laughs> very easy. Now, if I say, would you like to buy A or B? Huh? Now I have a falling intonation pattern. I have to explain why I don't want to buy it. And that's a lot harder. Okay, so you can actually use the psychology of intonation patterns to manipulate people ah, and to actually influence their answer. It works, people. It's crazy, but it works. It's mind control. I'm teaching you mind control today. All right, we're going to practice this a little bit later. Now, notice I just used a choice question. This is called listing intonation. Actually, for those of you who are interested in taking a TOEFL or an IELTS or a uh, TOEIC test, uh, this is extremely common and a common element. At some point, they're going to see if you know how to do this, and this is a, it's a very simple way to gain points. They're, they're, they kind of manipu manipulate you into doing this. Listing intonation is very simple. It can be extremely simple. One, two, three. It goes up, it goes up, it goes down. Very simple. It doesn't matter what you're listing. Um, if I'm saying he is intelligent, energetic, and ambitious, I'm listing adjectives. If I'm giving a choice, what would you like to eat? Would you like the chicken or the beef or the fish? All right. Because that uh, 
pattern ends with a falling, final falling intonation, we can use that instead of a yes or no question. Would you like the chicken? No. Very easy to say no. Instead, if we use listing intonation, we have to, we have to get an explanation. We need information. A person needs to answer. I, I would like the chicken. They can't answer yes or no. So that's a very simple uh, listing intonation. Uh, it could be phrases too, by the way. I like to swim. I like to walk in the mountains. And I like to just lie around the house and rest. And rest. I go down. So, uh, Ahmed, are you there? Mm -hmm. How are you? I am fine. How are you today, Ahmed? Fine, thank you. Okay, Ahmed, I want you to try using listing intonation and tell me two or three things that you enjoy doing. I enjoy writing poetry, comment on Facebook. Playing chess. Okay. Writing. Something I didn't hear. <laughs> Writing on Facebook. Okay, even though he used the phrase. Writing on Facebook and playing chess. At the end, he fell down. That's great. Uh, Ahmed, uh, I wonder if when I can figure it out, maybe we can play a game of chess in Verblink. That might be interesting. I'll have to figure that out, though. It might be fun. I, I will challenge you. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Efron. Ef is that correct? Am I saying your name correct? Efrain or Efron? Are you there? Yep. A little bit stuck. Okay. I'll come back to you. Eva. Hi, Eva. Hi. How are you? How are you doing? Doing good. Good. Glad to hear it. Uh, Give me a short list of what you like to do for fun. Okay, I like to uh, play Nintendo, go to the gym, and go bicycle. Okay, and go bicycling. Bicycling. Go bicycling, yeah, okay. okay. All right. Yeah, that was good. That's the idea. Very, it's simple, but that's it. Um, Google, I have to say hi to you. Hello. Hello. How are you today? Fine, thanks. And you? Uh, I'm. I'm okay. I. I'm a little sleepy, but I'm drinking an energy drink, and I'm quickly waking up. So, uh, if students. If you start hearing me talk faster and faster, it's because of the energy drink. It's not my fault. I can't help myself. Sorry <laughs> about that. <laughs> Red Bull's a killer. All right. Gulu. Yes? Gulu, tell me uh, about two or three foods that you like to eat. Sorry, can I get one more? I couldn't hear. I'm sorry? What was that? I couldn't hear your question. Can I get oh. one more? Sure, I'm sorry. Uh, tell me about two or three foods that you really enjoy eating. Okay. Uh, first of all, kebab. Do you know kebab? <laughs> kebab? Yeah. Yeah. I do. I, I also enjoy. Okay. I'm trying to get you to list things. Okay, and firstly kebab, and then our uh, special name uh, um, food is um, dolma and pilaf. Okay, now that was a little strange because you notice that she, what she did there when she was giving me a list, I, I'm not trying to pick on you, but what she did actually is she used a phrase, do you know kebab? Information, do I know? I have to answer. Okay, I like kebab, and she fell. But then she used a conjunction, and then 
and then she fell, comma, if we were writing there'd be a comma there and a conjunction and then I also like da 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 da. Thank you, Google, because this actually helps me explain something else about intonation. Okay. If, if we're simply making a list, one, two, three, you'll, you'll always hear that pattern. But what she was doing, she was giving me two or three phrases and using conjunctions. So, what she was doing, she's not using final falling or rising intonation. Our, when we speak in groups of words over a whole sentence, uh, the, each group of words has a little bit of falling intonation. Not as dramatic as at the end of a sentence. Listen to me carefully. I have to go to Manila in the morning to catch a flight. The last uh, is the lowest. I have to go to Manila in the morning to catch a flight. What she was doing is she was giving me phrases and at the end of each thought group, each uh, idea, which is one phrase, we're going to fall a little bit. So, although I was looking for listing intonation, her intonation pattern was not wrong. She was just using a different sentence structure. Uh, okay, do you understand that? It's not final falling, but at the end of a thought group, we will tend to fall in pitch. Usually we fall. Sometimes we rise. I have to go to Manila, Manila, uh, sometimes we rise, sometimes we fall, but we do something with our voice at the end of a phrase. Uh, okay, going to review. Isaiah, are you there? Yes, I am here. How are you today? I am great. How are you? I'm okay. Uh, ask me a question. Uh, oh, you just did. How are you? Ask me another question. <laughs> well, uh, if you if you were in, on vacation, what would you like to do? Okay, uh, what I would like to do is just relax on the beach and absolutely do nothing. Relax on the beach and actually do nothing. Actually, that was a small list. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, Okay, Marisol, I don't, I don't think we've met. How, how are you? Uh, I am. I am Hi, good. How are you? Oh wait, I'm trying to talk to Marisol. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, Marisol. Hi. Hi. We met? How are you? I'm okay. Have we met? No, no, we haven't. Okay, the Okay, my question was, have we met? Uh huh. And she immediately just answered no. It's a yes or no question. Look at that. Intonation patterns can manipulate things. Um, Marisol, tell me uh, if you could go to three places in the world. If I was going to buy your airplane ticket, I'm not. But if I was, where <laughs> where would you like to go in the world? Where are three okay, places? Three places you would love to go. Okay. I think I can go to Korea and um, maybe some place in Europe. I don't know because all places are beautiful. Maybe England for practice. <laughs> um, I think. The other place it would be uh, Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Now, if you guys were paying attention, hopefully you were, uh, Maria did something very interesting. She was trying, see her eyes looking up? 
Where would I like to go? Where would I like to go? Uh, that's okay. That's completely natural. Um, any native speaker would do the same thing if I asked them a similar question. That's natural. You know what else is is natural? What she did while she was trying to think, she said, maybe I, somewhere in Europe, maybe England. Notice, uh, okay, I'm getting some serious feedback from somebody. If anybody has the verbling window open or a YouTube window open, can you please close that window? Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, I have a technical problem there. Okay, okay. Now, notice what she did while she was trying to think. She used rising intonation in the middle of her sentence to give her time to think of what she wanted to say. That, my friends, is another intonation pattern. I was kind of uh, hoping that this would come up is why I was getting students to do listing. Uh, thank you, student assistant. Uh, anyway, she, while she was trying to think, maybe that rising pitch shows that she's not done speaking, which is another thing that rising and falling pitch do. Falling pitch shows, I'm done talking, it's your turn to talk. Rising pitch shows I'm going to continue. So when she's talking to me and she uses stretches the vowel sounds, maybe uh, Europe, maybe England, that shows she's not done talking. You notice I did not interrupt her. That's because I am used to intonation patterns. I know that means she's still speaking. You would very commonly hear this in choice, a choice question, like I just posed, or perhaps someone giving directions. You go down the street about three blocks, and then you're going to get, when you come to the second light, you're going to take a left. Like that, get, you know, even a native speaker will have to think about things sometimes. When we do that, we use rising intonation as a sort of a hesitation device to give us time to think. So that's another reason uh, that we use rising intonation. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate one more. Back to Russell. Russell, are you there? Yes. <laughs> Russell, what is your favorite sport? My favorite sport is uh, cricket. What? I love to play cricket. What? Excuse me? Oh, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry, come again? <laughs> uh, huh? <my> favorite... <laughs> <laughs> Ah, gotcha. I'm just demonstrating rising intonation. When we don't hear someone, we'll use rising intonation. Excuse me? Come again? Pardon me, I didn't catch that. All right? If we use a more formal statement, excuse me, would you mind repeating that? Ah? It rises at the end. If we use a very simple, huh? <laughs> Even just, huh? It's going to rise. It means I didn't hear you. Sorry, uh, Russell, I, I trapped you. Okay, <laughs> It was all a trick. <laughs> Russell, one of these days, you're, I, we're going, I'm going to do a class on explaining process. I really need you to join so you can explain cricket to me. I really okay. don't understand it. <laughs> and, uh, uh, on you know, time, I can't help it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to have to get back to you on that. But I'm going to make a special class. And uh, Russell will be my uh, student helper. And he's going to demonstrate explaining process. He's going to explain cricket to me. How, how long should I... Should, yes. Will that take one class only, Russell? Is it... Is there, a lot of rules, or <laughs> yes, 
Yes, yeah, there okay. are a lot of rules. It, cricket is uh, cricket is complex like chess. <laughs> okay. Okay. You know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to actually uh, reserve a class here at Verbling, and the class is going to be cricket. Explain it to the teacher. I promise you, I'm going to do that. All right. <laughs> okay. I will honest, be ready then. Okay. Because uh, I am clueless. I have no idea what those people are doing. Can I ask you something? Do you understand baseball? Well, no. For at least well, okay, well, all right. We can we can go back and forth on that one then. That that'll be cool. Okay. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. I swear I'm going to do that too. Okay. So asking for repetition or asking someone to repeat, we're also going to use final rising intonation. Um. Okay, now here is we talked about listing intonation. Now he, here's a, a kind of a. Uh, I, it's hard to say. Is it expressive intonation or is it a pattern? I tend to think of it as a pattern because it's always the same. Uh, let me see if I can. Uh, I, I need to. Okay, Marisol, Marisol. <laughs> Marisol, there's a rat right yes. behind you. Oh, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Marisol, there's a rat behind you. Oh my gosh, where? <laughs> <laughs> Shock and surprise. Oh my gosh. Hi, low, hi. Thank you, Marisol. You're, you're you guys are good helpers. Okay. <laughs> she said, "Oh my gosh." Ah, 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 when we show shock, surprise, disbelief, we will use that sort of, looks like a smile, high pitch to low pitch, and then ending high. That's another time where we use high pitch at the end when we're shocked or surprised. Um, when we can't believe something someone is doing. For... I see my friend doing something really stupid. What are you doing? Like that. Okay, there's an aircraft taking off. Who's watching the program from an airport? Mm. I, I'm getting some uh, a little bit of feedback there. Okay. Uh... uh Somebody show me shock. <laughs> Somebody ask me, teacher, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, Ahmed? <laughs> what? 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 what are you doing, teacher? <laughs> there you go. What are you doing? Okay, a friend. Are you there? Yeah, yeah I'm not sure. Okay, okay, good. Efrain, I want you to ask me if I'm crazy. Can you repeat? I didn't hear you very well. Okay, ask me if I'm crazy. Are you crazy? Ah, uh, that's okay. <laughs> Are you crazy? Ta -da! Good. Very good. That's it exactly. Are you crazy? Yes, I am, actually. And notice I use final falling intonation because I am sure that I'm crazy. I'm, I, I took special tests. <laughs> so I'm definitely crazy. Yes, thank you for asking, your friend. I appreciate it. Uh, okay. Who else is crazy? Is anybody else crazy here? Ari, are you crazy? Uh, no, I think no. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. am crazy. Uh, okay, but uh, hang on. I'll get, oh, hi, Omar. Okay, I'll get to you in a second. Hey, hi. Ari, hi. All right. But I have to tell you that Aries intonation told me something. Uh, 
he said no with rising intonation like maybe he's not sure if he's crazy or not <laughs> uh, no uh, and then he said I'm not crazy uh, with falling intonation which means he's sh sure Gulu are you crazy Sorry? Are you crazy? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> okay. Maybe, Gulu, maybe you're confused. What? Okay. Let's, uh, let's take, I'm getting echo from someone. I, I'm not sure. Somebody has a verbling window open or a YouTube window. Uh, you can either close it or you can pause it, one or the other, and then all of us won't hear the echo. Uh, thank, okay, thank you. Um, let's try something a little different. I'm going to go around and ask you guys a question, and you're just going to give me a one-word answer. The answer you're going to give me is simply fruit okay you're just going to answer fruit all right Th that's your answer everyone all right but pay attention to the question I ask because you may need to use different intonation Omar how you yes, doing buddy yes yes I am. well I'm a pretty you? good teacher well, Ready? so I am here with a friend of mine drinking some beers. And at well. the same time, I'm taking advantage of watching your, you know, to you. Ah. <laughs> I'm having a pretty good time here with a friend of mine. Oh, that's <laughs> very cool. Jeez, yeah, I... well, that's very cool. So if you want one, so let me know. <laughs> I feel like a rock star. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So, so teacher, um, let, 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 let me make it clear. So you're going to ask me a question. I have to say only fruit or the name of a fruit? Only the word fruit. That's it. All right. Got it. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. okay I'm going to ask a question or I just say a statement. Uh, Omar, I think fruit is very unhealthy. Fruit. <laughs> fruit okay that's a do you not oh who said that who is that hi <laughs> are you sure? okay <laughs> are you sure are you sure so even one word one syllable I said as bizarre crazy thing fruit is unhealthy you might show disbelief Russell caught on fruit even though it's one vowel sound. Fruit. Ooh. Fruit. Are you nuts? <laughs> okay. Right? All right. You may, you may show disbelief. Fruit. Okay. Te pongas aquí porque lo pasa que él dice que le da eco. Ajá, parece que se ve el eco para allá. Omar, your your microphone's on. Chago. Uh, okay. Yep. Chago, uh, your fruit. fruit. <laughs> I can't. I just. All I said was Chago. <laughs> um. Uh, Chago, I'd like something healthy to eat. What do you think I should have? Fruit. Food. Oh, okay. Now he could have answered that either way. He he said fruit. He is sure that I should have fruit. He could he could have said fruit. When we offer something, such as a, here, have an energy drink. Energy drink. When we offer something, we also use rising intonation. Would you like a snack? Omar, would you like a beer? Ah, like that. We. Eh? We'll use uh, rising intonation. Now, if we're sure that the person should have this because it's healthy for them, we can use falling. Uh, Efren, which would you Tell rather... Me. Hi. 
Which would you rather eat? Which would you rather eat, vegetables or fruit? Fruit. Okay. I, I asked a, a question with a choice. Which would you rather eat, vegetables or fruit, using listing intonation? Efrain is sure that he would prefer fruit. So he very clearly, actually that was excellent, very clearly used falling intonation. Nice job. That was good. Thanks, Efrain. You guys are very good. You're, you're falling into my intonation traps left and right. You're perfectly, you're making this class perfect. You, you guys are perfect. Everyone, yay for us. We are terrific. You guys are awesome. All right. Um, I want to talk about another intonation pattern, which I'm, I think you've probably all heard. And this is a little strange. It's an odd pattern which we use in certain circumstances. English speakers, when we don't know someone, will use something called drop rise intonation. We do this when we don't know some someone or when we're trying to be polite. All right. For example, uh, if any of you have ever called on the phone called customer service, you may hear somebody answer like this. I'm going to do a character change. Thank you for calling. My name is Teacher Oakley. How can I help you today? Okay. Now I'm back. Now I'm the teacher. That was my customer service attitude. Thank you for calling. I'm happy to help you. Can I help you? <laughs> All right. When you walk into the store, the shoe store, and you're going to buy those beautiful purple pumps that you've had your eye on, the shoe store clerk will say, hello, how can I help you today? Now, if you think about it, we don't normally talk to each other like that, okay? I'm, I'm not going to say, hello, Ari, how are you today? It's very good to have you in the burbling class. That sounds freakish and weird, all right? That's just not yeah. normal. I'm so glad you guys could come to the class today. It's so good to have you here at Verbling. Nobody talks like that. If you did, fake salesman talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, actually, when I teach this in a class, when I've taught this before, I personally, this is just personal. In the textbooks, you'll see it called drop rise intonation. But I personally call it customer service intonation. Yeah, and you're right. Fake salesman talking. I had a friend back in the States, and uh, his mom talked like this all the time. It was really weird. It creeped me out. It freaked me out going to his house for dinner. Really, she'd, she'd be like, Oakley, would you like some more potatoes? <laughs> How about a slice of bread? It actually freaked me out. I thought I was going crazy. Really weird. Okay, it was. it's very strange. But English speakers consider that normal when we're talking to somebody who, a stranger who's doing customer service. Or, for example, imagine uh, you get on a bus uh, okay, uh, you're in the movie theater, say. Uh, you might uh, look, oh, it's quite crowded. This movie's quite popular. You might uh, look at someone and say, excuse me, is this seat taken? Is this seat taken? Lots of quick highs and lows in my pitch. It's really weird if I know you, but if you're a stranger, that's considered to be polite intonation. I'm showing deference. I'm using this strange intonation pattern to be polite. Is this seat taken? Um, excuse me, did you drop this? Very commonly, when we're talking to a stranger, we're asking for a small favor or asking a question. We'll say, excuse me first. That's polite. Excuse me, do you have the time? Yeah, All right. It it's, okay, sorry, it's not... Sorry, what, do you have a question or something to add? 
Yeah, it's something about that. Excuse me, we uh, can see that very often. Uh, something like, um, excuse me, or excuse me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're funny because. Okay, <laughs> you just used a couple of different intonation patterns, and I laughed because it was funny. Now, yes, <laughs> okay. I actually, the greatest thing I ever heard, I took uh, a lot of business classes. I've done some marketing in my past, and I've taken the sales classes. The, the greatest thing I ever heard, I, I really took it to heart. I really believe this. In sales or in business, uh, one of my mentors in business told me once, and I'll never forget, he said, it's, it doesn't matter what you say. It's how you say it. Okay? You can talk gibberish and you can sell ice cubes to Eskimos if you use the correct intonation. It is absolutely true. Intonation expresses so much how you say things. That was very interesting because Tiago just gave me a couple intonation patterns for excuse me. Excuse me, simple phrase, that can mean a lot of things. Um, let's actually, let's play with that. That, that that's really great. I, I like that. So, just use the phrase, excuse me, but say it in different ways, and let's see if the rest of the class can interpret what your meaning is or how you're feeling. Tiago, since you, you started this, go ahead, give me an excuse me. All right, um, excuse me. <laughs> okay, excuse me. What do you think that means? Anybody? To me, that's he quite clear. I, I felt that from Fisher. I felt that he was, you know, was surprised, or he was upset, or he, he was angry. He was upset. He was upset. Actually, I agree with you. Excuse yeah, me. Probably. Excuse me. Excuse me. I agree. It sounded like he was ex upset. The way he stretched the vowel sounds, his in excuse me, and how he ended very lo low and slow. Controlled anger, we tend to use low pitch. I'm going to kill that guy. God. <laughs> it's not me. Excuse me, but he did. Okay. Usually, yes. usually when, when someone <laughs> argues with but I want to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> you said that far too nicely. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Are you crazy? Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> Well, excuse me. Well, uh, but well, that it, so T-shirt. Your expression means that probably someone, if someone talks to me this way, probably is drunk. Yeah, <laughs> could be. That could be could true. Be, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, excuse me. Okay. All right. That's interesting. So. Actually, Tiago made a, a very good point. Our pitch changes can indicate how the speaker feels. That's called, actually, expressive intonation, expressions, happy, sad, angry. Okay, those are ex my facial expressions. We also have expressive intonation. Just simply saying one simple phrase different ways can have a lot of different meanings. Um, shock, uh, or we can show anger, we can show, excuse me, <laughs> you know, I'm happy, excuse me. Uh, we can show a lot of different things. Okay, I want to go back to drop rise intonation, all right? I want you, let's do a little role play, okay? I want you to pretend that you work for a company, I'm going to call you, okay? Give me your best opening, if you remember wh when I did my, thank you for calling, my name is Oakley, thank you for calling ABC Company, something like that. I want you to give me your customer service phone answer. I'm going to call you now. Get ready. Who am I going to call? Who am I going to call? 
Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sometimes I can't help myself. I, I'm sorry. Are you crazy? Yeah, okay. All right. Gulo, Gulo. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. <laughs> Gulo? I want you to pretend you're answering the phone in a, as a customer service person. Do you understand? Sorry, no. No, okay. We'll let somebody else try it. It's okay. We can come back to you. Isaiah? Yes. Do you understand what I'm trying to do in my... Yes. Yes, I do, I but I, I, I'm not sure if I can make it. Oh, that's okay. You know, uh, we if you make a mistake, we learn by mistakes. Give it a try. Come on. We can do this. Ready? Right. Here we go. Thank you for calling me, uh, McDonald's. <laughs> That's pretty good, man. Thank you for calling McDonald's. We we would tend to use really fast up in town. I, okay, we can have no endorsements. All right. Uh, actually, I've already endorsed Red Bull, and now he, McDonald's. Okay. What what would you like to Marisol? What would you like to endorse? Uh, okay, I'm going to call you now. Get ready, Marisol. Ring, ring. You're connected with ABC Company. Uh, what can we do for you? <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. <laughs> okay. All right, you're, you're getting there. But the idea, I'm see, I seem to be stuck. The, the idea is we really use very, quite dramatic pitch change. That's ah, okay. that's the idea. Thank you for calling ABC Company. Like, okay. Alright, alright. You want to try it again? Okay. Okay, okay. Here we go. Ring, ring. Thank you for calling ABC Company. Okay. That, okay? that was pretty good. That was better. That was better. And actually, this very simple exercise helps us uh, expand our pitch range. Uh, Omar, I think your speakers are on or something. I, I'm getting echo. 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 Uh, okay. Do you hear me, teacher? Yeah. Now, I, now it's okay. Yeah. Now you're good. Okay. All right. I'm. I'm gonna call you. All right. Are you ready? To give me your customer yeah. service. All right. All right. A ring, ring. Thank you for calling Horse Meat Company. How may I help you? <laughs> Horse meat company. <laughs> okay, in, in, endorsing Red Bull or McDonald's—that's one thing. But horse meat. Okay, disbelief. Yeah, horse, horse meat. There are many meat? people who love horse meat. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Not us cowboys. We we don't eat our horses. Yeah. All right. Okay. Rasog, I'm gonna call you now. Are you ready? Okay, okay. Okay. Ring, ring. Hello, sir. Thank you for calling Books and Books. How can I help you? Oh, you've done this before. That's <laughs> not even fair. Wait, do you actually, do you work in any kind of customer service? No. You don't? <laughs> you, okay, all right. You no, I, you've got uh, I attend the phone in pharmacy. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, well, oh, that's partly customer service. Yes, See, yes. It, you did that very naturally, very convincingly it, it, to me, to my ear. That sounded like perfect. Obvious. I really, I knew you've done this before. It was obvious. Okay, uh, Tiago, are you ready? I'm going to give you a call here. Sure. Ring, ring. Oakley Verbling classes. May I help you? <laughs> <laughs> You're hired. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very good. Uh, oh, I'm uh, Gulu. Just uh, type something, and I have to. I have to say that I'm very sorry, Gulu, to hear that, and uh, you have my condolences. A uh, good friend of hers passed away, and and that's 
terrible news. I'm very sorry. My condolences, Gulo. I'm I'm sorry about that. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, no problem. I will leave you alone. Okay. Efrain, are you ready? Yes. Of course. Of course. Of course. Okay, I'm going to call you. Are you ready? Ring, ring. Thanks for calling to DHL Company, the logistic company for the world. May I help you, sir? Oh, I think he's done this before, too. He, he Okay, that's very good. Notice uh, he named the company, and, and then he gave the slogan, even. Here to help you in the world. That, that was kind of cool. Actually, I like that. And you used very good I intonation. You could have used a little more high and low pitch. But the slogan, if you notice, came on low pitch. Actually, that's an interesting... Uh, little thing. If you're reading a sentence, for example, and the sentence is something like this, that man who bought my car ran into a tree. Okay, no, there would be two commas, who, who bought my car, the relative clause in between. Okay, extra information or something in writing that you might see in parentheses extra information. We're going to add that information. We're going to say it. It's a little weird intonation, but it, our intonation just completely drops. That man who bought my car ran into a tree. Okay, our intonation will just bottom out for that extra information. This is kind of an intonation pattern, very common. Uh, a, a little strange, but uh, okay, we're gonna we're gonna do a little more customer service here. Give everyone a chance. Ari, are you there? Yes. Yes. Ari, are you ready? I'm going to call you now. Uh, yes, I'm ready. Okay. okay. Ring, 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 ring. Good night, Mister. You're calling to Popeyes Food Center. What do you want? <laughs> Okay, Ari, God bless you. If don't go into customer service, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot. No, no, no. We, I, I'm joking with you. Please, you know, you should never answer the phone. What do you want? It sounds quite rude. Okay. <laughs> oh. Not okay. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> uh, even how can I help you? Okay, you've got to use more pitch for this kind of uh, this kind of customer service or drop rise intonation. More pitch range. Okay, some of us second, some of you uh, second language speakers need to expand your pitch range. Higher highs and lower lows. Uh, you know, I don't I don't see any Japanese students here today, but Japanese. For example, have a two-tone language, so they sound all the time like they're unemotional because they don't have highs and lows. They sound very cold or bored, even. So, uh, don't be shy, all of you, any of you. Don't be shy to use your full pitch range. It's okay, and you should when you're when you're speaking English. Don't be shy if you're in a job interview or you're taking a, a TOEFL test, really, seriously, d don't be shy to use that pitch, okay? I mean, don't go crazy, don't talk like this, because then people will think you're crazy. Are you crazy? <laughs> some languages, actually, it's, it's interesting, some languages like uh, Norwe Norwegian or Swedish, some of the... Um, Languages from that area actually have five-tone language, which is why they sound a little strange when they're speaking the English, because their pitch tends to rise and fall at very dramatically, and it sounds weird. So, so we, intonation, learning intonation is also about controlling your pitch range, all right? So, Ari, you need a little more pitch range, a little higher on your high, a little lower on your low. Okay, uh, you know what? Um, 
that is going to do it because it's 10 o'clock and folks I gotta go I'm out thank you very much that was an excellent class you guys really helped me today thank you very much bye thanks Oakley thanks thanks teacher we gotta end it bye bye thank you, thank you. see you guys thank you very much that was an excellent class you guys really helped me today thank you